Moldova, a country wrestling with its identity between Russia and the West, became the stage for one of the most audacious money heists in history, as it saw the vanishing of a colossal $1 billion. Wow, that is an eighth of the country's GDP. Curious to uncover the intricate layers of this monumental heist? Join us in this video, where we meticulously unravel the entire saga behind the Moldovan bank fraud. Let's dive right in. Before the scandal, Moldova's banking system was a fragile house of cards. Institutions like Banca de Economy, Banca Sociala, and Unibank, pillars of Moldovan finance, stood on shaky ground, riddled with vulnerabilities. These banks, once the pride of a struggling nation, would soon become conduits of a grand-scale embezzlement. The Moldovan bank fraud that drained an eye-watering $1 billion from Moldova's economy was executed with a level of cunning and audacity that seems ripped straight from a crime thriller. The plot's masterminds? The architects of this financial heist employed a sophisticated network of methods to siphon the funds. The plot involved a cabal of bankers, businessmen, and possibly complicit politicians. But what about the watchful eyes of the law, the guardians meant to prevent such catastrophes? Well, it wasn't just the people, it was the system. Red flags were raised, unusual transactions and rapid, inexplicable growth in bank assets. These signs were astonishingly dismissed or ignored by the authorities, who either couldn't see the disaster ahead or chose to look the other way. It was as if the regulators were wearing blindfolds, allowing the heist to unfold right under their noses. The lax oversight and weak financial controls were like an open invitation to those with nefarious intentions. Want to know how it all started? The fraud started by setting up a bunch of fake companies. These companies were basically just names on paper, and they were used to secretly move money out of the banks. This was done through fake loans, a trick that made the banks lose a lot of money. But this fraud wasn't just happening in Moldova. It was part of a much bigger international scheme. The stolen money was sent across different countries, hidden in complex financial systems. It went through bank accounts in places like Latvia and Russia, countries known for keeping financial secrets. The discovery and initial investigations were like peeling back layers of a rotten onion. At the center of this storm was Island Shore, a young 28-year-old businessman accused of being the mastermind behind this huge mess. Picture Shore, not very tall and looking younger than his age. Even sitting in his fancy home, filled with cream and gold, he didn't quite look the part of a big-time fraudster. It was almost hard to believe that someone with his boyish looks could have been involved in something so serious. The Kroll Report, a significant investigation by a global agency, stirred up a lot of talk in Moldova. This report claimed that Shore had been behind a complicated plan that almost broke three major banks. Unibank, Banca Sociala, and Banca de Economy. But who exactly was Shore? Right in the heart of Chisinau, nestled in a residence that dripped with luxury and opulence, lived Island Shore. His home wasn't just a dwelling, it was a flashy showcase of his extravagant lifestyle. A house so opulent, it sat next to the upscale building, where Shore, in a display of sheer extravagance, celebrated his wedding with a Russian pop star. This building, once the seat of Moldova's parliament, spoke volumes about Shore's reach into the high society of Moldova. Island Shore was more than just a wealthy man. He was a legacy in himself. He had taken over a range of businesses, including duty-free shops, from his father Myron, who had moved to Moldova from Israel. Shore's life story was far from ordinary. In his plush home, there was a quirky statue of himself, a symbol of his flamboyant character. It depicted Shore as a man who treated money like a plaything, a man who passionately supported local sports, funding Moldova's top football team, and sponsoring the Tennis Federation. Could this mean he was really behind the fraud that rose in Moldova? Well, Marina Tauber, who led the Tennis Federation and grew up with Shore, painted a picture of a young Shore as a business prodigy. While we were all busy with school, he was out making deals, she recalled. However, the Kroll Report told a different story. The report unveiled a complex narrative that contradicted Island Shore's claims of innocence. It suggested that Shore had played a big part in a scheme that took loads of money from these banks. It meticulously detailed how, starting in 2012, three major Moldovan banks, Unibank, Banca Sociala, and Banca de Economy, fell under the control of new owners. These owners, seemingly unrelated, acquired their shares through UK limited partnerships known for their opaque ownership structures. The transactions that followed, as per the Kroll Report, were baffling. The banks engaged in a series of financial activities that lacked any clear economic sense. This web of unexplained loans systematically drained the banks of their funds, rendering them financially unviable. 
Kroll's investigation pointed to a disturbing possibility. Many of these companies receiving funds appeared to be linked to Island Shore. At the heart of the Kroll report was Banca Sociala, which had reportedly been under the influence of entities linked to Island Shore. This bank, in a move that puzzled many, funneled a staggering 13.7 billion lei, around $750 million to five local companies, also thought to be connected to Shore. One of these Caritas Group SRL received a substantial loan of 2.6 billion lei, also around $572 million, despite being registered at an unassuming address in Chisinau. More akin to a small workshop than a finance hub, the story deepened as the report revealed how these Moldovan companies didn't merely hold onto the loans. They swiftly transferred the large amounts to UK and Hong Kong registered firms, which had banking connections in Latvia. These entities, veiled by the secrecy of tax havens, subsequently shifted the debt to Fortuna United LP. This company, intriguingly registered in an ordinary flat in Edinburgh, shared its address with 421 other firms. Basil Sarko, Moldova's money laundering expert, highlighted the clever use of these UK registered companies to conceal the real recipients of the funds. Sarko was not only investigating the disappearance of the billion dollars, but also a larger $20 billion money laundering scheme from Russia. Both operations, he noted, used a similar tactic, leveraging UK shell companies with Latvian bank accounts. His main suspect, a mysterious Mr. Big from Russia, a dual citizen with significant control over some Moldovan banks, and then Cornelius Gurin, the Prosecutor General of Moldova, broadened the scope of the investigation, going back to 2007 and implicating numerous figures in Moldovan politics, including several former prime ministers. In the wake of the Moldovan bank fraud, the nation's economy plunged into turmoil marked by a sharp currency devaluation igniting public protests demanding justice. Political leaders faced scrutiny and resignations, while doubts arose about scapegoating. The crisis laid bare systemic corruption, leaving lasting scars and emphasizing the need for reform. So what ultimately became of the culprits? Did they face any consequences or punishment for the alleged involvement? Regarding Island Shore's fate, the central figure in these shocking allegations, his legal journey took some surprising turns. At that point in time, Shore had only faced charges related to abuse of office during his tenure at Banca de Economy. Astonishingly, in the past few weeks, he had been released from house arrest to run for mayor in his family's hometown of Ari. Located to the north of Chisinau, in a stunning twist of events, Shore emerged victorious in the mayoral elections, securing an impressive 62% of the vote. However, the heart of this story lies in the courtroom drama where justice finally catches up with some of the key players in this fraud of the century. A Moldovan court, in a historic move, handed down a 10-year prison sentence to Viral Burka, marking the second conviction linked to the notorious 2014-2015 Moldovan bank fraud. Burka, accused of mass fraud and acting in the interests of a criminal group, faced prosecution for orchestrating transfers exceeding $100 million while serving as the acting chairman of Banca de Economy, despite vehemently denying the charges. He became another name on the list of individuals entangled in this intricate web of deceit. But Burka was the only one found guilty. Island Shore received a harsher punishment, 15 years in prison. Also, Moldova's parliament took action, dismissing central bank chief Octavian Armasu for his failure to recover the lost billions. However, there's more to this fraud that has to be resolved. Another enigmatic figure, Vlad Plotnayu, wielded immense influence in Moldovan public life before vanishing in 2019, presumably finding refuge in northern Cyprus. Over 30 unresolved cases linger in Moldova's courts, and the echoes of this audacious fraud continue to reverberate in the nation's political landscape. So in this gripping journey through the intricate web of deceit and scandal, we've uncovered the shocking details of the Moldovan bank fraud. But our exploration of deception and intrigue doesn't end here. Join us in our next video as we dive deep into the dark side of the digital world with the evil side of TikTok. Get ready to be astonished by the untold stories of manipulation and the hidden dangers lurking behind those addictive short videos. See you in the next video.